Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and our news analyst, the geopolitical military, Tim Alexander, is back. And of course, he does a regular blogs on uh, uh, Europe business dot with one s dot blogspot dot com. And uh, I, I could say that we have several years of news packed into a day. And I know you have lots of things. I, I've been doing research as well. I was requested by Jeff Rents and uh, Deborah Tavares to research the latest news articles by Jim Stone, uh, also put up by uh, Alex Jones, the issues about the uh, viruses that actually are carriers of DNA to alter people, I call GMP or genetically modified people, to rewire nerve pathways such as the NMDA or n methyldiaspartate pathway in the brain. We'll talk about that later. Uh, what's going brewing right now is there really is a, a civil war on in Ukraine, although there's one report you mentioned, Tim, before the show, where the, the so-called uh, the Maidan party and sector right in uh, Kiev are starting to pull back now that Russians are actually moving. Yeah, that, but that's, uh, that's a limited report, and it's it's yeah, uh, I, I don't no, buy it really. no other support for it. Here, here's the situation, and and uh, I guess the bottom line is we have gone over the last year to the edge of of war, either in Syria, or Iran, or uh, now in the Ukraine, we've gone to the edge multiple times, and and uh, the war literally that we went to the edge of could very quickly have become the Third World War, and that's certainly in the case of the Ukraine. And uh, we're right back now on the edge. Now the question is, will this be the time that we cross that edge and jump off the cliff, or will we somehow or another, by the grace of God, uh, be given more time? Uh, let's let's go through a, a handful of really uh, shocking stories that are out today. Uh, right. The U.S. has sent in the paratroopers to Eastern Europe as Russian bombers test NATO's defenses across Europe. Uh, that's a mouthful. We right. have uh, a paratroop brigade, the 173rd Airborne Brigade, which is located in Italy. It is the United States' only airborne force that is permanently located overseas. And and it is the U.S. Army's number one primary quick response, quick reaction military force in Europe. Now, we have been begun dispersing these uh, paratroopers to Poland and to the Baltic states on the border of Russia. Now, supposedly, right. the, the, these are just exercises. Well, exercises have a way of becoming war uh, right. very quickly. But what we're doing, this is, and this is very important, this is our main reaction force. This is our force that we can fly in deep into a country and seize a key site or sites uh, as part of a, a, a all-out war. We've got them now dispersed in several places very close to the Russian Republic. That is a sign that uh, war could be imminent and that uh, NATO is extremely serious about war. Now, is that going to happen today or tomorrow? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. I, all I'm doing is I'm an analyst, and I look at the trends, and I see a whole lot of very large red flags. We've come close before. Maybe we'll back away, but don't bet the farm on it. Yeah, there's a couple of principles of war that we've talked about. And you're, you have a, 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 legal, a legal and a military mind, and so do I. And the first question is there's several rules of war. The first is you never are in total control until you have boots on the ground. Uh, the second is, although you can prosecute a war in terms of sending missiles or whatever, if the other side can deny those missiles hitting the ground or deny their access to that airspace, like the Russian S-400, you basically don't have a way of prosecuting a war. Um, the American military right now, uh, effectively, their navy is completely able to be denied by the Russians to enter into airspace. Well, let, let, let me tell you what happened. Uh, what was it yesterday? A, a Zukov 25, which is uh, an older fighter. It, it, it's not a bad plane, but it's, it's certainly not fourth or four, four and a half generation fighter. Right. Uh, <clears throat> it flew over a U.S. Navy guided missile frigate. Uh, right. The I'm sorry, uh, a destroyer with the Aegis uh, air defense system on it. Now the Aegis system picked up on it. And uh, then everything went blank, and it uh, basically uh, flew right over the top of the ship uh, a dozen times at supersonic speeds, which, you know, rattles the hell out of, uh, of everybody on board because it sounds like a large bomb going off. Um, now, it could have been normal uh, jamming or, or something very advanced. Uh, 
the Russians demonstrated about uh, a year, going on two years ago, a plasma uh, kind of cloaking or plasma stealthing device uh, on a Zhukov Su-27 family aircraft, and they flew it uh, into the inner defense uh, zone of a U.S. Navy supercarrier battle group. That's a battle group that's surrounded by four or five uh, Aegis equipped destroyers and cruisers with a supercarrier at the center. And uh, we basically only saw the plane when it was on its final uh, attack run, which of course it was a simulated attack run. And uh, it scared the living hell out of the people uh, in the U.S. Navy all the way up to the top. Now, right. Uh, and I have a lot of respect for the U.S. Navy's capabilities, but you have to remember, you know, when you have you have people that uh, uh, are uh, a potential enemy, they're not stupid. They're putting in time and effort to get around your systems, and uh, the Russians have a and the Chinese have a lot of very good engineers, and they've been at this game for a while too. Yeah, let, uh, let me go through um, the list of the ones that I know of that the Russians have. They have the S three hundred system they give in Syria, and they have the. 400 around Moscow on major bases. And they're working uh, on the they, 500. But the, yeah, yeah. Working, yeah, they also have uh, the uh, Kans hypersonic uh, cruise missile. They have the uh, Hoot super cavitation torpedo. And they have the Alexander uh, missile. Basically, all of these yeah, we have no defense Mach against. Yeah, it's Mach 7, Mach 8. We have no, we have no defense against them. The, Astros, the Russians knew uh, Topol M missile, the uh, SS-27, just was tested. And it's a mobile launch system that basically we have no way of seeing it in satellite. We can't target it. And because of it, its, its ability to be launched mobilely, it basically can't be taken out by our launch systems. It also it takes off so quickly, even our first stage launch uh, attack systems that were put in the Czech Republic and Poland uh, are not really very good at taking off a well, missile that's fast. Well, and that's assuming, of course, they would still be in existence because the Alexander uh, hypersonic uh, cruise attack missile is designed to take them out. Right. So, in other uh, words, the first stage of the of the Russian response may not be to send intercontinental missiles, but simply to take out the these uh, these basically launch phase attack on launch uh, systems. But, but they're, they're so fast. You're talking about a, a, a handful of minutes delay while the uh, exactly. ICBMs are being erected. The Alexander uh, missiles are being launched, and the impact is in a matter of minutes because uh, they, they travel so insanely fast. Exactly, oh, now yeah. let me let me tell yeah, you. So, uh, yeah, yesterday, so. uh, off of Scotland, off of the Netherlands, and offshore of uh, Denmark, uh, a NATO fighter aircraft uh, intercepted uh, Russian uh, strategic bombers. Uh, the TU-55 uh, family. These right. are the great big four-engine uh, uh, propeller bombers. They have uh, two propellers per engine, and they're extreme long range, about 9,000 plus nautical mile range. They carry very large, very fast, long-range cruise missiles that are armed with the hydrogen bombs. And uh, these were on simulated attack runs. Uh, we haven't had anything like this since the height of the Cold War. This is a warning. Uh, it's also a last minute practice, but this was a warning across Europe. And uh, had they launched these, they could have taken out Edinburgh, they could have taken out uh, York, uh, they could have taken out London and any other major city or military facility in the United Kingdom very quickly. And uh, once they were launched, uh, it would have been very difficult, to, depending on the type of missile, but it probably would have been very difficult to, to have intercepted them. Exactly, um, yeah. But sending I in hear the, the paratroopers, you know, bad sign because it means it's a disbursement <clears throat> of that force, and that is literally a very important force in wartime. Yeah. Now, absolutely. When we come back, we're going to talk about some other things the Russians have designed their system over the past half century to beat all the chinks in our armor. Back in a moment. Uh, we have a couple of things going on. We Early this morning, I was in my uh, infrared sauna, by the way, a Proline sauna, which detoxes. I get in uh, my routine in the morning, if you want to know it, is uh, an hour of Proline sauna, 
An hour of, uh, to an hour and a half at least, of uh, hyperbaric oxygen where I'm able to answer emails in my chamber so I get lots of oxygen to those neurons to try to answer people's questions. Then time afterward to get a bath and shower and then maybe some vibrant slim exercise and uh, treadmill. And then on to the show, do research. And of course, I'm doing research all hours of the day and night. I don't have a specific schedule. It's just like when things occur. And uh, the question I have, Tim, is with all these things, mistakes are going to get made. They have uh, This is basically a dance because uh, I watched a show early this morning while I was in the sauna about the American Book of Secrets, and it had uh, a number of people on, including Alex, talking about the Comex, and it had Man Cow on from Genesis Network, and it had many other people, experts, financial experts, talking about the fact that the gold and the gold reserve is being manipulated. Uh, we're teetering on an edge of economic chaos and collapse, <clears throat> uh, all engineered, by the way, to bring in a new authentication currency, which will be electronic, the central note of that is actually Colorado Springs at Shreve Air Force Base, and I'm the first and the only one to relieve that, re- release that information. There are other databases around the world, but they're primarily controlled by America. That <coughs> means uh, at a push of a button, <coughs> everything you own doesn't exist. Right, and if they want to press Alt-Delete, you don't have to go to a civil detention camp. You have nothing. Uh, and in fact, if you, with the hypothecation of the United States into, quote, bankruptcy and administrative law, we don't even have constitutional law now. So when people swear an oath, they're actually swearing an oath to something that it has, in reality, no longer exists. It exists in people's hearts, but not in reality. And we basically have a tyranny of a fascist <coughs> corporate government. It's a fusion of transnational corporations and bankers that rule it, the world. And they ultimately want to make just territories. That's why when you hear Henry Kissinger say, in 10 years, Israel won't exist, it won't have to. It'll just be a territory for trade. And the central control f- focus for that Middle Eastern area will be the little sliver called Israel, but it'll have total control over millions of square miles of oil and gas territory and other nations that are basically going to be living subsistence lives and being uh, utilized, yeah, just like you in know, Africa. All that assumes that everybody is going to play de- row over and play dead. The Syrians yeah, are going to play dead, the Iranians they're, are going to play not. dead, the Russians are going to play dead, and the Chinese are going to play dead. Yeah. And you know what? I don't know all those people, but what I know of the Syrians, what I know of the Iranians, and what I know of the Russians, they're pretty damn tough. And they're well, kind I, of I, a I, lot like us. If you said, uh, uh, if the, a the, foreign the, the, power the, were to come at us and say, you know, we're, we're we're going to chop you up. We're going to break your country right. apart and tough if you don't like it. Uh, We'd say, yeah, tough, right? Uh, okay. By the way, look up in the sky because those are uh, 500 I ICBMs uh, inbound, and yeah, you're about Tim. to cease to exist yeah. when you hit the temperature of the sun in about two minutes' time. Have exactly. a good day. Yeah, Tim, they, here's the background. Uh, the Russians are an amalgam of the toughest of all of the different tribal groups that be, were the Vikings. Uh, the, we talk about the Norwegians and the, and the Swedish, etc., but the toughest of all were the Russians. And they were invaded by the Mongols, so they have a lot of Mongol blood as well, which, of course, uh, you know, Genghis Khan had the largest single empire on the planet of the Earth. So now we have a, a people, basically, that can't be dominated. And a similar thing is if you look at the most warrior people of the Middle East for 5,000-plus years, it's the Syrians. Uh, this is the people that won't be crushed. They, and by the way, they put business first, even before the religion, so they can have Christians, Syrians, uh, you know, uh, Alawites, uh, Sunni, all at the same table because they wanted to have a civil society despite their religions. And so they're all on the same street. My great-grandparents <clears throat> were from Lebanon, and my great-great-grandmother was, her, her father owned a caravan that went from Damascus all the way to China twice a year. And then she used to literally walk beside the camels carrying all the things to China and back. So these are tough people. They will not be dominated. I'm going to tell you what happens. If you attack a Syrian, they will kill you and all your relatives out to four generations. The same with the Russians. You do not mess with Russians. These are some of the nicest people on earth. They'll give the shirt off their back. But if you cross them, I'm not going to well, say that, God help that's you. That's true, and I, I've known that on a, at a personal <clears throat> but level. But they'll shirt off their back, they'll, get, they'll let you sleep in there. Bill, can, bed, I, I, can I quote from this you, quote we were, uh, I quoted to you while we were on break? Right. Um, uh, Ukraine, it would seem, is meant merely to provide the pretext for a war with Russia. Short right. of that, it would be used to force a humiliating 
capitulation by Moscow that it would only set the stage for redoubled aggression aimed at Russia's dismemberment and transformation into a powerless semi-colony. Presumably, those in the White House and Pentagon believe that such a conflict would stop short of a nuclear one, but who knows? These people have got to be... To be uh smoking the wrong weed i mean i don't understand how i don't think they make weed that strong i don't know what they're I, I don't understand how or shooting in their veins yeah, but these, it's these, bad. these people are delusional first off the russian physicists i'm going to repeat this are the best on earth for psychotronic warfare scalar warfare missile systems in fact <clears throat> i took care of the senior engineers working at the lockheed martin facility in littleton colorado and their entire facility was dedicated to building rd80 rockets under the russian license because they're the best rockets on the planet and they re-engineered them every year, okay? So when I took care of the employees there to the mid and late 90s, the Russians had engineers on site and these are the best rocket systems on the earth. The Russian uh, program in terms of their weapon systems, weapon defense systems, radar, are prescient. So the idea that we're just gonna waltz in there and crush the Russians is really, really stupid. Well, I mean, this, gets to, this gets to that, uh, I always <clears throat> compare it to the space chef that uh, was played in the first uh, Star Trek TV show. Right. And I actually had a, 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 they sold them for kids at Christmas time, and I actually had one. And it was like three or four different levels, and the people at the bottom, or the, the game at the bottom level, didn't know <clears throat> what the higher level was doing, but it, it affected everything. At the highest level, this is a spiritual battle. It's a battle between right. the fallen Lucifer, Satan himself, and God. And and a lot of people are, by with Satan is the great deceiver, and a lot of his own people are deceived the most. Well, they, they, they should they also realize that they're going to start a war, World War III, and they're going to come out, and mm. well, they'll have yeah. eliminated a lot of so-called unnecessary eaters, that is, most of us, and they're going to be lords of the earth, and everything's going to be hunky-dory for them. Wrong. Yeah, well, I want them to be aware, and I'm going to give a notice to them, the globalists, Mr. Pindar, and all the other characters that think they can rule. The wrath of the wicked has nothing to compare to the righteous indignation and destruction of the righteous. And of God himself. And God. Yeah, and we are his representatives. And here's the point. The point is that God is going to rule this world, the least of, of Satan and his minions here, which are bankers, basically, lying and stealing. And we have these 17 Satanists that are running everything, basically, uh, under the Druidic Council. These are all Satanists from one ilk or another. And people say, well, no, no, that's not true. I said, look, they've infiltrated every religion on earth. They've infiltrated every political system on earth. That's why when Jesus was taken high above the temple, they said, look, Satan said, these are all my kingdoms. He wasn't lying. Satan was calling out a fact. The fact is that lease is up. And uh, it's going to be up real soon because right now, and this is the latest news, I want you to comment on it, that now that the um, Hamas and uh, the uh, various factions in Palestine have come to an agreement, immediately the Israelis broke off negotiations for the peace treaty. Did you hear well, about that? Well, they, they don't want a peace treaty. If there's a peace no. treaty, it will be imposed upon them. Right, and also they, their idea of peace is not P-E-A-C-E, -E, <laughs> it's P-I-E-C-E. -E. Pieces of people, pieces of Palestinians, pieces you got it. of nations. That's the kind of peace they want. Just a small difference. Small difference. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. Just want to mention a couple of other things. Uh, America has these advanced weapon systems in space. They have space based weapons platforms, a thing called Rods from God, which are rail gun uh, depleted uranium rods. Scalar weapons that create a plasma interferometry type of plasma explosion equivalent to 100 megatons or larger within minutes. Uh, they have scalar weapons that can actually uh, cause scalar disruption of DNA and cell membrane activity on any, dialed into any specific organism from a virus to a specific person to a crop. Uh, America has geotectonic weather weapons that can trigger off earthquakes, volcanoes, and extreme weather. Uh, I mean, it's just almost Art limitless. Another, oh, yeah, and they also have, a, a, they also have a, a, a kind of a space, if you want to call it, it can be shrouded as well, but because they have shrouding technology, cloaking technology, if you want to call it. So and, the uh, yeah, and the thing is, they have a thing called a dreadnought, which is basically a couple times the size of an aircraft carrier with anti-gravitonics. It's larger than the TR-3B, which is bigger than the, than the typical uh, football field. 
uh, has heavy lift capacity, has, can literally carry hundreds of airborne vehicles, all kinds of advanced weapon systems, including plasma cannons like Star Wars, and all kinds of horrifying weapon systems that just boggle the mind. I mean, literally Star Wars type level of technology. And the problem is, like any of these things, if they can be denied or if they can be interfered with, um, or if you can evade them, they basically come to naught. And, it, and ultimately, you have to have either people and or robots on the ground in order to control the ground-based territory. It doesn't matter what kind of weapon system you have. I think that all this uh, dance... That, that, it, what you just said, uh, said was is a basic fact of right. modern warfare. It yeah. takes boots on the ground. Right. You and can the destroy thing is, think, an area, but if you're actually going to occupy it and rule it, it takes human beings on the ground. Now, one of the things I was involved with is my colleagues were working on a project at the Cell Biology Department at Dalhousie University, an offshore DARPA project in 1972-73. We were involved with a project where we were taking uh, small animals and fruit flies, etc., to our radium room and exposing them to radiation and trying to protect them with butyl hydroxytoluene, specific antioxidants, specific drugs, trying to protect their DNA. And we actually did discover specific nutraceuticals and or drugs that could actually block radiation. That's why I have the, the most experienced and the most advanced radiation protection protocols and supplements on the planet. So if you go to Nutramedical, same with protection against pathogens. In fact, uh, Nutridine, right, is one of them. Nutridine, like to Nutridine our long acting ELA, which is our Nutritrala, cell detox glutathione, Regenerex, cell defense, uh, et cetera. Um, it's amazing stuff, okay? And then we have the protection against pathogens. In fact, I had a gentleman yesterday, his wife told me, we reversed his type, uh, his stage two hepatitis C liver failure to normal, normal within six months. And they did a big biopsy and then the hepatologist is completely boggled and says, he's never seen this before. We have things, see the medical profession is not designed to heal illness. It is there to manage it. And uh, the same way, big, big the same way as our politi billion. politicians are, are not to make every American wealthy. I mean, literally with the amount of resources we have here, intellectual and otherwise, every American citizen should own a home. Every American citizen should have a reasonable bank account. Every American citizen should have no debt. And I'm not talking about socialism. I'm talking about should have Dr. resources. Bill, if we didn't have the Federal Reserve, if we hadn't had the unnecessary World War I, World War II, Cold War, and all the other little wars we've spent trillions of dollars on, our streets literally could have been paved with gold. Right, and we have also suppressed technology of nuclear fusion. In fact, um, uh, Dr. Ted Brower is over... Tesla, uh, most of Tesla's stuff <clears throat> was suppressed. Well, I mean, you're talking not... free energy. Yeah, not only Tesla's. I mean, I, I got some documents here just recently sent to me about Dr. Rossi's research in Vancouver talking about, in, and working in Italy, uh, talking about uh, cold and hot uh, fusion. And hot is only 1,200 degrees. We're not talking about real hot. Uh, the, there's all kinds of technology that's being purposely suppressed. Something as simple as just geoengineering the, bioengineering the uh, plasmids for uh, chlorophyll. So you can, instead of chlorophyll making sugar, it makes hydrogen. So you can go direct sunlight to hydrogen generation and just store it in a, in a hydrogen fuel cell and uh, convert it to electricity directly or store it in a fuel cell for cars for uh, yeah, combustion. Yeah, uh, hydrogen works perfectly on the uh, American uh, or any internal combustion automobile. Yeah, but they have a special type of adsorbed engine that doesn't uh, cause a danger like the Hindenburg of an explosion. And these technologies are all developed. It's all done. Yeah, it's yeah, not something it's, that may uh, be done. I, I forget what they call it, but it's it's in the fuel tank. and they, they, Right, they but they, the, 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 the powers that be don't want American citizens to realize that for $234 an ounce, five years ago I was sent patents by a chemist up in Huntington Beach, California. That No, it's actually more than now, seven years ago. And, he, and within six months of him sending them to me, I found out from his friends that he was terminated in a very unusual circumstances. Uh, and he sent me the actual patent. So they have this now where for literally under $300, you can literally draw out of the seawater Oramus or gold. Now, yeah, I, rem I, know, I remember I, I think it's, uh, coming across it's, that information myself. It's, it's, it's my analysis that, in fact, it's the exact opposite of what you'll hear from the so-called conspiracy theories that we don't have any gold in Fort Knox and so on. It's the exact opposite. What would you, and I'm just going to posit this as a theory, but what would you say, instead of 8,000 supposed tons of gold, which means we have the number one gold supply on the planet, how about if we had 800,000 or a million tons? 
of course, it would mean a wash with gold. The price of gold would drop. Uh, and everybody's been moving, especially countries like China, into gold because it's they're out of, out of sync by a century, thinking that if you're in gold and you're okay with against the world hegemony of the Federal Reserve currency, which is also foolish, because you can't inflate any currency, including their own renminbi, or the ruble, or any other currency such as the euro, and even come close to the number of currencies, either electronically currency printed or non-printed currency, of the Fed Reserve note, which is not a dollar. It's the Fed Reserve note, which is the European currency. So when I hear all this stuff, I know gold is going to go up because they want to continue the conspiracy theory that we don't have gold. We have, you know, uh, what is it now? Um, tungsten coated bars with gold uh, no uh, uh, gold coated tungsten bars yeah gold yeah, yeah but uh, yeah gold plated tungsten bars but it's my theory that it's the exact opposite we are you may be right. with I, 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 I'm not, uh, and I'll I'm tell you why I know that because right. the, the, there's a mine I did a locum in British Columbia and I knew the miners up in Williams Lake north of Williams Lake British Columbia at that time and that was in the late 70s they had the largest mine on earth and there was more gold being taken out of there than than Midas had and the King David David uh, of ancient Israel uh, it was unbelievable the size of this gold mine and then we have another giant gold mine in Alaska that's now supposedly the biggest gold deposit on the planet. I don't think we're short of gold at all. I think, in fact, the exact opposite. I think we have so damn much gold, it's ridiculous. And we have to maintain the conspiracy because they, it's like anything. You've got to manipulate the people on the commodities market, and you've got to maintain the I'll idea that... I'll tell you what we're short of. We're short of moral human beings in control. Right. The worst right. criminals on the face of the planet are in control. Right, and of course the whole idea is eventually they don't want you even any form of currency. And I, I, I mean, you know this from from Scottish history and so on, that the longest used currency was a tally stick, and a tally stick basically was a sacred instrument that you wouldn't alter, and it meant that you could use tally sticks to, to exchange, to say, sheep or materials or wood or whatever. Not very many people or, know about tally sticks. That's interesting. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, and the tally sticks basically were used longer than gold or silver coins or any other currency system, and it was part of the barter system. And I came up with an idea of an encrypted tally stick system that would be fully encrypted and fully, you know, basically un unavailable for the well, government. Well, you'd have to, to use quantum uh, quantum mechanics, but yeah, you could do it. Yeah, you could do that. And then not only that, what you do is you'd link it to something like, let's say, one one thousandth of the value of an ounce of gold. We don't care what the value of the gold is, to be honest with you. And then you would actually have the market decide the price or the value of, uh, let's say, a sweater versus so many yards of asphalt in your yard or how so much babysitting or so many teeth capped or uh, so many you know pounds of carrots and uh, then the transportation costs. And the market itself would then set these prices electronically. And it would be more like, it would be more much more advanced than eBay or Amazon where people can well, already go You know, Dr. Center. Bell, it's not just that these people are corrupt and want all the money. They want wars to kill people and to facilitate them getting well, even uh, more money in power. Well, they don't, they don't want anybody to have substance, you see. What they do is they're actually hypothecating to the point where even your money is a debt instrument. You don't even have actual anything. You have an, a, an instrument that says you owe the Federal Reserve so much <laughs> money when you have that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what the... Welcome back. And Tim, um, let's expand on this whole thesis. I think we had the first blood moon just here on the Passover. Second one is October 8th. Uh, I see economic chaos. I really see this dance with Russia as a very dangerous one. And there's going to be, I think, some missteps and some very grave danger that they're going to have a regional war in the Middle East or this war in Ukraine. Uh, Europe can't withstand another war. It won't, they, they don't have the economy to support a war. Uh, Germany can't withstand the idea of even a price increase, let alone cutting uh, oil and gas off to Germany. They'll freeze in the dark. And when I hear the stupid comments by Obama and uh, John and, and Kerry, I can't believe these people are foolish enough to believe in Germany that America is going to supply them with liquid natural gas when they forgot the date. Yeah, they'll supply it to them, but it'll be 2022 or 2025. It certainly won't be in time so that they will have a decent Christmas or fall. So this well, idea you know, that they... if, if, if you have German <clears throat> politicians and American politicians and French and British, et cetera, et cetera, that are so damn corrupt, they're prepared to get their country into a third world war and to... Yeah, uh, but to uh, no, the third world war won't last long, though. I mean, we're talking about wars that are going to be a matter of four hours. We're not talking about a war that's dragged out even over a weekend. I mean, if they get into a really big conflict here, let's say they take this, I think it was 103rd uh, 
division that was going to be sent in possibly into a territory in Russia to control something? 173rd uh, uh, Airborne sorry, Brigade. Sorry, yeah, 173rd. The, the likelihood that Russians, which have a giant force of special forces, will move into European communities, ta- turn off the gas and oil, target specific missile silo sites inside Europe. I mean, uh, the, the Europeans will be stomped on so quickly, including U.S. military bases in the Middle East and Europe, uh, they don't even understand. They'll have their heads spinning. We'll have thousands upon tens of thousands of soldiers and military personnel instantly dead. We will have our Navy instantly going to the bottom of the Mediterranean and the Black Sea and the Atlantic Ocean. We'll have Russian literally with a strong accent saying, Mr. Obama, it's time to surrender. Russia is got you in the sights. I mean, that's it. Well, and, we'll be doing, we'll be getting our punches in too. But you know, you see, well, this, yeah, but the thing is, we the, don't. The, the, the thing is, the get, get, of getting the goy to kill the goy uh, in a nice big global war, and then breaking in all kind of money from it, uh, and then expanding your wealth and power. You eventually reach a point with military technology, as many extra biologists say, you know, uh, that uh, societies in different planets probably reach a certain point where the, the technology becomes such that they can literally destroy themselves. And if their uh, yeah, you're talking about the exobiologists talking about the idea. Their morality has not expanded uh, greater than their their military technology. Guess what happens to that uh, group of beings? Well, it's, it comes down to spirituality, and you know, Jesus Christ is the incarnation of the Creator God, but God is so big He can appear across the vast universe of a hundred billion stars. He can He is the God of all the worlds, of all of the universes, in the entire cosmos and beyond. And what I have to people understand is that we, at some point, may be midwives to other civilizations that are at this crux point in history, where basically, unless we turn to the Creator God and to morality and decency, we're not going to survive our own technology, because the satanic forces are not just local to this part of the parsec of this, you know, you know medium-sized arm of the Milky Way galaxy. We're talking about a about a dark majesty of evil that's so intelligent and so powerful and so malevolent that it has been stalking mankind since the very moment that God conceived of us. And we are his children, and we're living in this little blue blue jewel of sapphire floating in space called Earth. That's a womb for seven billion souls now, soon to be more. I read once where God, uh, supposedly to someone, Jesus described it as my beautiful blue uh, jewel. Oh, jewel. That's what I told you. Remember, that's what I had from my witness when I was eight oh, and a half. Okay. Well, my blue you, jewel okay. of the earth. Okay. My blue jewel, which is basically is a sapphire. If you look at it from space, from a distance, the best way to describe Earth being the blue planet is a star sapphire. Yeah. Have you ever seen a star sapphire? Yeah. What 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 I think is going to come out of this is this: we're going to have uh, these wars and rumors of wars march us quickly toward the mark of the beast, which is going to be ruled by the European. Fed Reserve System, which is quote our currency, Russia and and China which will have by the Rothschilds, right? And that's going to temporarily bring a false peace. It says when they shall say peace, peace, both in the Book of Acts and uh, in uh, in the Old Testament, the Book of Malachi, it says when they shall say peace, peace, and destruction shall come upon them suddenly, like birth pangs upon a woman, meaning the birthing of a new civilization, a new kind of world. And it says, hold back the winds for a time, times, and half a time, for literally half of the seven-year period, uh, so that the sealing of the sons and daughters of the Most High God can occur. So there will be what I call children who are fully sealed to the will of the Most High, which will be empowered with his omniscience and omnipotence of the signet ring of God to call forth things. And it says, in those days, no rain, I'm talking about the rain of the Holy Spirit inspiring people, except by those that are in those two companies, the company of what's called the House of Ephraim and the House of Judah. And there will be those that will call out, that will speak truth, say the truth, and people will know the ring in their spirit that is intellectually not assaulting them, but also spiritually it's correct. That's what we try to do in the show, is you want to bring things, whether it's dealing with your health issues, geopolitical, financial, so you have to understand, yes, gold is going to go up. It can't help but do it, it's going to go up. They're going to do it, but eventually, it says in the Bible, even your gold and silver will canker. Now, gold cannot rust, but at some point, they're going to make it illegal tender to have gold and silver or any currency in your pocket of any kind. At sure, some point, you got to have the mark of the beast, the RFID chip. Right, and and that means that that those Christians that are living in what we call rescued cities or doing encrypted 
uh, uh, bartering, etc., will completely be illegal. And of course, the globalists will say doing this is a is a, is a basically a capital crime and, res- and requires death. And that's why when people say that they don't see it coming, one of the topics I want to talk about uh, this hour in the next few minutes is uh, I was asked to look at this article by Jim Stone, and of course he, he always takes something that's real and spins it because he's a what I call these deep operatives. And he says the virus is in the wild. No, it's not. These phage viruses that can rewire your brain have to be injected and have to be repeatedly injected. And they can hit things like the NMDA and the AMPA receptor, and they can actually turn Well, they can do that the electronically, right, by scalar means? Well, they can, but they're not very effective, to be honest with you. They're, they're pretty hit and miss, and everybody's a little different biologically, so it's not very good. But if you inject people, you can hit the NMDA receptor and basically turn them into zombies so they don't have any strong emotions or drive. Uh, but you have to repeatedly shoot them, and if you do it, some people will actually develop an autoimmune condition like these women that are reported by uh, Leslie Stahl uh, of CBS uh, just the other day. On You can actually pull up the blurbs on it about the anti-NMDA receptor disorder that medical doctors and scientists are now talking about. These are almost certainly contaminant phage, or meaning eater viruses, that are to eat bacteria that are actually been now guided missiles carrying DNA that create anti-NMDA receptor antibodies and destroy your neural pathways, trying to rewire your brain, and they've developed these to stop cocaine addiction, uh, heroin addiction, to actually turn you into a zombie, because those normal chemicals, whether they're cannabinoids, like marijuana, uh, opioids, or uh, uh, things like d- dopamine are all they're designed specifically to give you drive. They're normal molecules in your brain. When you take them away, you don't have a soul anymore. You don't have any drive. You don't have any willingness to resist tyranny. And that's what they want. These are soft go weapons to turn the population into zombies. Well, I'd but say have an to... awful lot of the population is there. Thank God we're not all there. Well, they're fluoridated. Uh, firstly, I, I don't drink fluoridated water. I refuse vaccines. I uh, threatened the school that if they tried to vaccinate my daughter, I'm coming down armed. And I didn't, and I didn't, and then nobody called police and said, well, he's threatening us. No, no, this is not a threat. This is a guarantee. You give my daughter a shot, and I have one for you, but it's containing lead. And then people say, oh, you can't say that on the air, Dr. Deagle. I said, I damn well can. I want people to get mad as hell and not take it anymore. If a tiny percentage of the population finally put their foot down, you know, part of the reason why I'm still drawing breath and doing things is because I've got such a crazy-ass attitude that I actually will deliver it, okay? So if they want to, uh, as I said Bill, to... they found, like in the, the American Revolution and other uh, <clears throat> earth-changing events, that only 10 or 15% of the population is right. necessary Right, well, to I told the people everything. that we're going to try to force my be a smart meter. I said, you better come with a SWAT team and extra body bags, because you might take me, but some of those people coming down here aren't going home because they have body, our body armor piercing weapons. I said, so I'm a crack shot. I said, yeah, you might hurt me and kill me and my family, but you're not going home to mama. Or you're going to be losing a body part and you'll remember me forever. And I said, and this will be, the, and I said, I can guarantee you that enough resistance is pushed back if they had been stupid enough to start a revolution in Bunkerville at the Bundy Ranch. Those BLM agents anywhere in the country would be easy pickings. And now in Texas, there's a big war on against the uh, Bureau of Land Management. Believe me, the American Revolution has started. The Constitution does not allow started. the federal government to take land like that. They, Guess it, what? We, we, don't have a federal, we don't have a federal government. We have a proxy globalist government that's pretending to be our federal government. You mean like we have an Obama who's pretending to be an American? Yeah, he's pretending to be a president. He occupies the White House, and he's taking orders from Rasmussen of the United Nations and NATO. He doesn't, and he takes orders from Lord Evelyn Rothschild at his morning tea in Greenwich Mean Time when they set up the comics and decide the gold price with their manipulation. That's what we're dealing with. We put our foot down and we'll put a stop to it. It's a major problem in terms of irritable bowel syndrome. And so, uh, Tim, uh, I want to go over some of the things that are the latest issues that are going on. Uh, This virus that was put up by Jim Stone, of course, is a good example of disinformation ops. They take this issue that's real. And I I commented on this about two years ago about vaccines that actually are designed specifically to change neural pathways to control. And they've proven this now. I have the actual articles I'm going to post up today on the site so people actually can look at themselves and say, oh my gosh, she's not... 
in the realm of science fiction because viruses, no, but it, it's, by it, definition, it, tend right, to. But here's the, here's the thing: they're, they're they're contaminating other vaccines like the Gardasil and other vaccines with these with these phage or eater viruses that are guided missiles to carry DNA. People have called it a vaccine, but it's not a vaccine when the antigen. I won't which take is a, any vaccine now for yeah, any let me explain. They, they call it a vaccine, but it's not a vaccine when you insert a phage DNA carrying cassette of genes into your body and your own cells then become the manufacturing point for the antigenic stimulus to create an antibody and an anticellular response. So this is called a vaccine, but it is not a vaccine. It's a way of making genetically modified people, GMP. And yeah. what people should understand is that you require repeated shots. You can't just inhale this like Jim Stone said to say it's not in the wild. He's unqualified to open his yap and talk about these things. The thing is, however, is that they are experimenting on the public and they want soft kill weapons like scalar technology that can cause cancer, and dumb you down, paralyze you. How do you know when the, the, I see so many people, particularly younger people with tattoos, how do you know that when you're being tattooed that there's not something in that ink? Well, first off, the uh, process controller chips are not that far along in iteration. The ones that, uh, that flight that disappeared, flight, uh, Malaysia Flight 370, the next iteration of the chips will allow process controller chips to be small enough to be inhaled or to be actually dyed into your uh, dermoepidermal junction and actually act as a, if you want to call it a super heterodyning chip that actually can link in with bodily functions and change your body biochemistry and epigenetics. That's real. Uh, these can so be tattooed it, it, into can it be mixed with something like uh, M- MSDO that is a skin absorbent agent, yes, a carrier yes, agent? Yeah. Sure it can, and, or it can be injected with, with, an, with an, most likely it's going to be like a, a tattooing needle or a vaccine needle or uh, IV or something like that. But with a, uh, uh, with a carrying agent that's skin absorbent, uh, by the way, that's the, they, they think that may have been the, the, the way they got to the driver that uh, in Princess Diana's death, that he really right. wasn't drunk, but they, they put a substance yeah. on the steering wheel. Well, they wheel. probably put something uh, toxic that absorbs through the skin. I don't think the chips would absorb that well. I think you physically want to inject them so they're in your general circulation rather than just embedding in your skin. And uh, what people should understand is there are specific frequencies that can jam certain uh, neural pathways, cellular enzyme activity, etc. And they've, these are all worked out. They know that the leukemia is, is created at the kilohertz range, 24 to 25 kilohertz. We know that specific cell functions are literally jammed like a jamming a radio. And when you in certain block pathways, like the N-methyl deaspartate pathway, the AMPA pathway, specific neurotransmitters that can regulate things like smoking addiction, uh, the idea of being able to have joy or rage, to get angry, those pathways actually can be geoengineered or you can modify the people so they can't have those emotions anymore. And that's what they're doing. And people say, no, no, they're not. And so. On the one hand, what Jim they? Stone is saying you, is you true, know, but on the I, other hand, I, I, you have I, to participate. You have to get a vaccine in order for this to happen. So I tell people, don't get vaccinated. I have all these whiners, oh, well, my children had to get vaccinated, but now please rescue them, Dr. Deagle. Yeah, I'll try to rescue them, but the problem is, don't get them vaccinated. Exactly. And they'll say, and say well, now Under they're, any they're, circumstances, right, with and, what's and, going and, on in the world right, right now, do not accept well, any Well, the first thing is, they could theoretically make vaccines good, but here's the criteria. Number one, a vaccine should produce a similar pattern of, of antibodies, IgE, IgA, IgM, to a pathogen that you would have had in the past to build up a natural immunity. It would have built a natural T cell uh, pathogen anti-pathogenic uh, capacity and in what's called an anamnestic response where the cell population increases and you can radio label them uh, so that you could deny or kill the pathogens or control it or prevent or actually turn off disease. So theoretically, if you had a hepatitis vaccine, a real vaccine, your hepatitis viral load would drop to zero and the disease state would disappear. No one's ever done that for an animal or human study. So we don't really have vaccines. Uh, a natural state of immunity will give you prevention so you don't end up with a surge of antibodies or an increase in viral or bacterial or mycobacterial load or tuberculin bacillus. So the real issue is true immunity is not simulated by the quote current spate of vaccines that contain DNA from bug larva, anthrax, plasmids, uh, heavy metal adjuvants like mercury ethyl salicylate which is not vitamin M, uh, aluminum, all kinds of crap. And then when doctors try to get real uppity about that with me, I just ask them tough immunological questions because my research goes back to the 1970s when I worked in the Synovia Analysis Lab and I am 
presciently aware of all the specific criteria to really make a vaccine if you actually want to do it. The fact is the vaccine uh, court that we have now in America prevents these drug companies from ever having to actually create a real vaccine that might be safe and effective. And instead, they create pseudo vaccines that actually destroy health. So for example, you get a flu vaccine, your chances of getting a flu are double. Plus, now you get a load of heavy metals, it's and if you're an older down, person... It's an upside-down world, Dr. Bill. Right, but the thing is, they, they cow the it's doctors... It's not about most, health, it's about money, and they know, don't want you healthy, they want you to die. Right, and here's the point. Uh, when I went to medical school, the younger medical students, we all kind of worshipped the older doctors, because they're going to teach us all these things, and they're like the white coats, and they're the glory guys, and they're the Superman. And then after a while, when you're a resident, and you've actually done more procedures than the house uh, senior residents, or the staff men who just flow around once in a while, you start, the shine comes off, and you realize this is a big damn industry, and it's not about getting people better, it's about managing disease, not getting rid of it. And then as you realize, when these drug companies come out, and drug after drug, you see the horrifying side effects of them, like, you know, I call the kill you jack drugs, or the uh, coenzyme uh, blockers, you know, that block the HMG core reductase and cause dementia or heart failure or whatever. You really start to realize, I've been duped. I've been well, used yeah, like a, like a prostitute. Has, has mostly been picked by the pharmaceutical well, companies. So they're now in the high, high laying fruit. But the same thing, goes with, same thing goes with money. People don't even have real money anymore. For example, in the Middle Ages, if you had gold coin, you had real money in your pocket. The dollar, most people realize, is a debt instrument. When you have $100 in your pocket as a $100 Federal Reserve note, it says you owe, you owe the Federal Reserve $100. It's a debt note. It's not even money. That's what's bizarre about it. You don't have money. What you have is now you're further in debt, and also because you're hypothecated, you're a slave that owes money to the Federal Reserve, which is neither federal nor reserve. It's a, it's a non-U.S. international corporation based in Europe. And well, so what as, I tell people as is... As a species, as a species, the human race had better get their act together. Well, the, the act together is getting together because we're... Because we're... We're, get well, we're, we're telling the truth. You see, they don't get this in school. A lot of homeschoolers, by the way, our program is their homeschool. Do you know that, right? They listen to this program because they know it's Christian. They know they're going to get good science and good geopolitics. They're going to be able to ask questions, research topics, find that, that oh my gosh, this is not made up because we're trying to do bizarre entertainment like, you know, coast to coast radio. We're actually telling it as it is. And people say, oh, and that's we so want dangerous. You to think. I don't actually, ask anybody I mean, to take what I uh, say at face value for granted. Yeah, exactly. That's not what well, I'm about. Well, our tagline for, you know, listen to what I say, but, you know, do your own research. And well, if you the, want to the, say, well, the Timothy tagline, John Hart Sterling is full of it, cool. Yeah. But at you know, least Jim, do your the, own research. Tim, the tagline for us in the program is ask better questions. Yes. Just ask better questions, because when you own the truth, you'll do something about it. But if you think you're just going to accept us because we're sort of like, you know, we're so glorious and so wise that you have to accept it with blindly accept us. No, 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 no. You're not going to own the truth. You won't. <coughs> Excuse me. Makes me <coughs> makes me choke. You won't die for the truth if you don't own it. And that's what people need to grasp here. This isn't optional to pursue the truth. In fact, your fellow Americans, your fellow Canadians, Aussies, whatever, that don't pursue the truth, they put all the rest of us in danger. So ignorance is not optional. And ignorance you need to get in people's face, whether it's your relatives, your friends, your business cohorts, you need to get toe-to-toe -to -toe in people's faces to challenge their viewpoint of the world because it's dangerous to not ask good questions. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And uh, we have Tim back, and we're, we're talking about uh, looking at all these different news items and kind of integrating it together. Um, I personally think that now the latest news report that you had, Tim, I want you to say this because it's, it's really hard to believe that even in the space of an hour, you can have an additional news report that completely changes the perspective of how fast this is moving. Uh, uh, yeah, the, the Ukrainian foreign, minister ha uh, foreign ministry has given Russia a 48-hour ultimatum to explain its military exercises near Ukraine's border. As Foreign Minister Andriy, and I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that last name, warns, right. we will now fight with Russian troops. Um, now, how stupid the is that? Coup I mean, really junta, which, as Russia has, has said today, is, is totally controlled by the United States. We're calling the shots. Uh, they are doing everything possible to provoke a war with Russia. Well, why does America think they could win a war? I mean, it, it's it's embarrassing 
if America loses this, they also not only lose a war, they also lose the ability to prevent other republics uh, that are breaking well, states and, from and, Ukraine. Well, and almost and, instantly the, the dollar will cease to be the global current. Uh, right, and, and, and then on top of that, we have a situation where uh, that Russia will, at the very least, raise the price of gas and oil out of, into orbit, so Germany will crash, which means you'll have a bond market run. The dollar will be further attacked by Russia and China and the next nations. So, in other words, we're basically on the precipice of an economic blowout of the and, dollar. And that's if we don't blow up the world with World War III. Right. And so I think this is what I think. And these are all the financial experts from Gerald Salente and Peter Schiff and all these other experts are all saying the same thing, that the dollar is going to be blown out. And there's nothing that the plunge protection team and the COMEX people manipulating gold can do. The countries like India and China are buying gold up like crazy despite well, the news. Well, see, they'll, they'll, yeah. they will try to blame this on Russia. Yeah, well, I don't know how it's going to wash, because that's going to be a stretch. Well, I you mean, know, it won't my... wash with the 25 to 45 percent of the people that uh, can think, uh, have a brain, and don't watch NBC, ABC, CBS, CNN, Fox, lying media, and actually, you know, go on the Internet well, and, and, yeah. and learn the truth. Well, well, well I'm, you know, for, the thing is, so Tim, many the people, other people... This is what irritates the crap out of me, pardon the language. But there are so many people that are so ignorant about what's going on. And let, let me ask, you know, we are in a situation that even the mainstream media is now beginning to say WW3, you know. Yeah, uh, regular but, media. But, but, but yeah, but low-key kind of. Okay, we are in a situation that's worse than the Cuban Missile Crisis, that's worse than the Berlin blockade. Uh, we're toe to toe with the Ruskies, and where is America? Where are the people in America saying, uh, "Excuse me, uh, hold on here. We're involved in uh, you know we don't even know how many wars anymore. Here, there, everywhere, and now we're going to fight with a country that's got as many thermonuclear bombs as we do over what? Because we spent five billion American taxpayer dollars putting in a bunch of fascist goons." Uh, and, and we're going to go to World War Three over this, and my well, family has to die. Cards. I have to die. My kids have to die because well, well, of what? Well, well, well. Well, here's some other wild cards I want to throw in there. Ebola now. We know this is a weaponized by virus. The Marburg I, I virus, believe which, Ebola was created in advance by right, a but, war but not only, But this, this current one has a totally different incubation period. Usual is four to seven days, and then it kills you. And it kills you so quickly they can't spread. This one can literally weep virus for 21 days to 28 days. And now there are a number of countries, number of countries like Pisa, Italy, there's actually 24 people from North Africa that are held in a month of quarantine. Uh, anybody coming from a number of African countries now are blocked. We have the same thing going on with the SARS beta coronavirus too. Yeah, the, that, 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 now, that, excuse me for a quick second. That variation was first picked up in uh, Gabon or uh, G A B O N. Right. Uh, within the last yeah. few days, correct? So, uh, as I said already, 2014 is going to be the year of the plague. We have reemergent H5N1, a new. Uh, uh, version of H1N1 flu. We've got H7N9 ready to leap from China, all it's spreading all over China now to Hong Kong and other adjacent countries. We have multiple, at least a half a dozen major airborne plagues that are going to leap all over the world this year. And any one and of these by, by itself. Design. And then, by the way, any one of these can create what's called medical martial law. And that's the ideal form of martial law they want. Because a bank holiday will only last a week or two and then they'll just kind of redo the dollar and whatever. To be honest with you, temporarily at least, which is what they did in the Second World War, devaluing the dollar is actually good for our economy, well, it'll kill the rest of the world. Uh, because what it'll mean is all the investments in international funds in India and China and Malaysia, these transnational corporations say, oh man, we've got to move all our factories back to America because it doesn't make sense now, especially now America is going to become the number one energy producer on the planet. By far, we're going to outstrip Russia and the Middle East or anywhere else. America is on the verge of that. And as Obama gets pushed off because he's now put another stop on the XL pipeline, his, his days are numbered. I expect that Obama will probably be, the impeachment will start in the next month or so, and that the procedure will move very swiftly this fall. I think that Obama will, the full impeachment process will be going by November of this year. And I think that what will happen, a lot of the things like the XL pipeline, Prudhoe Bay oil coming on. As you move toward the 2016 elections, you'll see a lot of the policies. <clears throat> they won't get rid of Obamacare. They'll rebuild it from the inside so they won't deal with the 
political blowback. Do you know but it won't even... that if you sign up for Obamacare, you have to give your consent for the Department of Homeland Security to do background checks on you? And when I went to... Uh, you're kidding. To this, I, I you're said, kidding. You're kidding. Hold it. Hold yeah. it. What does the Department of Homeland Security have to do with my health insurance? you got to be kidding. Well, uh, we can't proceed without it. I said, I want to talk to your supervisor. Same story. I said, well, forget it. I ain't going there. You've got to be because kidding. It's not constitutional. You can't require me to spend my money with a private firm and then, as part of that, require me to give you consent to waive my rights infinitely so that your fascist, jackbooted Department of Homeland Security can do whatever they want. Whoa. You know what I tell people to do? Get yourself on Nutrameds. Selectively figure out which group of private surgeons. I belong to the Association of American Physicians and Surgeons. Doctors are going to allow what's called direct fee pay to the doctor and they'll take care of you. I really think we need direct fee paid doctors. Where we just completely sidestep in health insurance. You pay the doctor, you pay the hospital clinic, whatever, and you get taken care of. And we need to start setting up networks where we call we call care networks where basically if someone needs longer care we kind of co-insure each other because this idea of going through big insurance plans or big government is evil there's no other word around it with death panels which by the way they, they do have so by the way Sarah Palin didn't think this out it was actually worked out by um, it was worked out by uh, her colleagues who, who said hey they're gonna have death panels Sarah didn't figure this out she's not that smart <laughs> But the fact is, it's real. She had really good advisors, and that's well, one of the you, good... you have a situation, Dr. Bell, as you well know, that more and more primary care physicians and physicians of all kinds are no longer in practice by themselves or with a handful of other uh, similarly uh, you know, rated uh, licensed uh, physicians. They're now part of great big hospital-centered uh, groups, and right. they don't get to make... Uh, they have less and less say. When Mr. Smith goes in to see Dr. Brown, uh, Dr. Brown knows that uh, he has to prescribe certain things for him, that there's a certain regimen of treatment that he has to do. Even if Dr. Brown knows that this is stupid, all it is is going to all it's going to do is cost Mr. Smith a fortune, and Mr. Smith's going to die. But he may have a way to save him, but he can't use it. Well, that's one of the reasons why I'm not interested in the license. I've had a couple of people say. Dr. Deagle, why would you want to? We want you to kind of fight against Colorado and all their their scheming because of what they did, uh, which is totally illegal, by the way. And they said, no, I'm not interested in license. A license, by the way, and Deborah Tavares said this very clearly. A license means you're the enemy of the public, the state, and you're licensed because they want to have you under control. And that control means you're going to do things to be harmful to the public by edict, by standard of care by licensure, et cetera, that's going to actually make and sure that you're not. the pharmaceutical companies have programs to check to see what what pharmaceuticals you're prescribing. And right. if you're not I prescribing found the, the right way. amount, the right yeah. people, they're at your door. Absolutely. I had that actually happen. Come to your door because you're not prescribing their drug. Welcome back. And um, here's the situation. Um, I think uh, that this year and next year, we are going to see in a series of spasms, wars and rumors of wars and economic chaos. Uh, these are a prelude to the uh, world, and this goes from Uganda to India to all over the world, authentication currency, which is the mark of the beast. And I think that the uh, jockeying right now is you know, very dangerous because real war and real destruction can come out of it. But I think it's jockeying of Russia and China to say we want a better deal from the international bankers. We see the COMEX manipulating in gold. I watched a program early this morning and it had uh, even some of our people here from GC, uh, GCN. It had Man Cow, it had Alex Jones on talking about the COMEX and manipulation of gold. I take a converse view, viewpoint because I know about classified information, I know about actual gold mines. It's my feeling that America doesn't have 8,000 tons of gold. We don't have tungsten bars sitting in Fort Knox that are coated with gold, you know, cold coated tungsten bars. We've got a lot more gold than that. They just don't want to flood the marketplace. 
And when they're manipulating the gold with paper, they're doing it because it's for public consumption. They have to maintain the conspiracy theory that we're short and that they're always short. And they, they also, uh, you know, we've got Robert Rubin and other idiots that are trying to tell us, don't worry about it. When they disjunctioned the gold from the actual uh, value of the so-called Fed Reserve note, it really doesn't matter because it's just a commodity now. No, gold is real money. And the fact is that they want us to eventually move to where all, the only real money is virtual money in their banks. They don't want cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. They don't want an electronic talent stick that is what I proposed that allow you to do encrypted bartering, which is far better than, by the way, a, a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a scam. And all the other ones, a whole bunch of them, there's about a dozen now of these cryptocurrencies, which I think are scamtastic. You need something that actually is backed by something. In other words, uh, so many dental caps, so many yards of concrete, so many hours of babysitting, so many hours of teaching, so many uh, board feet You know of what roofing. Hitler did, and, 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 and please don't anybody misunderstand this. As far as I'm concerned, Hitler was a, was a, a horrific monster. But he, one way he, he not only kept power but expanded his power early on, uh, when he first went into power, he, in, he kicked the central bankers out. Right. And he instituted a new uh, form of currency for Germany based on one R, one uh, mark or equivalent, was equal to one R, one German working for one R. And uh, within three years, Germany went from being destitute with hyperinflation to being the most prosperous country in Europe. He right. kicked the central bankers out. And that's why the German people loved him and, and unfortunately trusted him too much. Of course, what they didn't know was he was one fourth Rothschild. Right. And, and of course, you know, it was, and, it was and actually backed by the two. Empire. But, the, but right. little secrets like that are frequently kept from the public. Fortunately, we now have the Internet. And you're, if you if you dig, you'll find out all kind of really interesting things like that. Well, the other things that people should understand is the Germans were collaborating with the Japanese and the Americans on building the nuclear bomb before the Second World War. It's yes. because of these other things that happened and the deals broke that they ended up becoming enemies. They were actually allies working on the uh, long before the Manhattan Project. Well, it's, it's believed that uh, by many people who are, are not nuts, who are serious historians, that Germany exploded two what we would call today uh, small tactical nukes uh, on the west Plut or the Russian front. Yeah, plutonium bombs. And and Hitler traded uh, enriched uranium and plutonium to the United States as part of a deal uh, that uh, we just ignored uh, his escape to Argentina. Right. Um, the Japanese uh, off an island exploded uh, a precursor to atomic bomb. They were getting close. And believe yeah. you me, had they had the atomic bomb, uh, they would have used every one of them against us. But um, And by the way, the history, Japanese had many... is not the what they tell you, you see. The Japanese, by the way, had many subs, not just off of Hawaii, but off the California coast. So the Japanese, if they had been able to bring in nuclear weapons here, they would have used oh, yeah. because the Japanese, and the Chinese know this the hard way, the Japanese military were the most unethical, vicious maniacs that have ever graced the last century in terms of what they, they made. What the Germans did and the Nazis did and the Russians did look like nothing. Cause well, the, that's I, why I, when we are using the uh, Abe, the, the Japanese prime minister, to prod the, the uh, Chinese, uh, we're, we, that's a that's an extremely that's a, that's a, sensitive. That's a ten, spot. sensitive. Yeah, well, they get angry just over the fact that 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 Abe went and honored these uh, these war criminals, Japanese war criminals that went through and, and raped you know the raping of Nan King and and the and the horrors that went on in, uh, with the Japanese invasion of the of of China. Uh, they remember it. They understand this. And well, uh, the you, I mean, you know, I was born uh, in 1950. And uh, that's five years after it, uh, really less than five years, four and a half years after it ended. So there's a lot of people alive who, who still remember. Right. And certainly people one generation removed her, her, who heard it all their okay. lives from people who actually were there and experienced it. Let's, and, let's, and uh, let's right, work game. What you uh, did in, in China was beyond horrific. To, and I don't to, even to want to uh, go into detail on the air because it's, 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 it's too terrible. Tim, we've got about uh, eight months left in the year. And I, here's what I 
I'm not going to do it to say it's a prophecy. I'll say it's a prediction. We're going to have a bank holiday this year. We're going to have a plague, one or more plagues this year. We're going to have some degree of martial law for at least one to two weeks. We're going to have an incursion into a war games that are going to really aggravate Russia. We're going to see a number of the sub-republics of Ukraine completely separate and break off. The orders that were given last week by in, in Geneva to tell people in Donetsk and Kharkov and these other Ukrainian cities to disarm, you know what they said to the people in those areas? Hell no, we're not going to disarm. When the people in Kiev, which are an illegal government, disarms and when they have a new election, then we'll talk. Right now we're not. In fact, so that when Kiev is trying to do threats to Russia, we have these break-off republics and eventually it'll, it'll spread to, to uh, Moldova, it'll spread to peoples, and eventually what will happen in Europe is going to have to pull back the first missile launch systems that are already deployed in Czech Republic and Poland. This Polish really don't realize that they're putting themselves in grave danger, uh, that they're going to have a first strike offensive by Russia. Well, well, if any Dr. conflict Bill, happens, it, Poland's going to get fried. It's not the Polish don't. It's that the, po the people running the Polish government who are bought and paid for by the globalists and Zionists, just like most governments in the West are. They're following an agenda. They're puppets. They're doing what but they're doing. But they're, they're going to put their people in grave danger. Because if I was they're. Russia, the very first thing I do, the very first thing I do is to say, before getting out of bed, before brushing teeth, before doing anything else, Russians prosecuting a war, is I would launch first strike below the radar missiles on all these launch sites in Poland and the Czech Republic and elsewhere in Europe. And they can do I'm it, basically. Sure they will, if it, if it comes to that. They'll use right. the Icelander, the Alexander missile, which uh, it flies, depending on which source you want to quote, uh, Mach 7, maybe even Mach 8. Right. Second and thing I do put, uh, is I would, take, uh, nuke on it. I would take I would take I would take any NATO Navy and put them to the bottom of the sea. Hypersonic cruise missiles, Alexander, boots over navigation torpedoes, and, and literally they time it so literally at the same time in multiple oceans all the Western naval forces would go to the bottom. That's number two. They now, may do that. Who knows? Number three, I would close off airspace with the S-400, and not a bird would get into their airspace. Not a bird.